Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday from our knees. Happy birthday to you. This is Alan Karpik with Edwin Watson, and he is 45 years old today, and that's a good thing. I, you know, I, I, you can't shake your head on that. It's, a, it's, it's all good at any age, but uh, it doesn't seem quite possible that we, when we were watching number 36 run around uh, for the Boilermakers from 1994 to 97 with Jim Coletto and Joe Tiller. And Edwin, first of all, happy birthday. And I know you're 45 years young, but it, uh, it's always a special day. Hey, I appreciate it. I appreciate it. It is a special day, uh, 45. Uh, <laughs> and, uh, one of my, my youngest had a football game last night, and, and I was just thinking, like, man, I'm, I'm about to be 45 years old, and I, I, I barely can run around with them guys, those little ones, right? So and he's, in the, he's in the fifth grade, so... Uh, it, 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 it's catching up to me quick. Give us a little bit of the, uh, of the elevator speech of what, what you're up to now. I know you're in Indianapolis and in real estate, et cetera. And, and anything that you care to share about what you might be doing today with family, friends, or whatever. Uh, well, um, what I'm doing here in Indy, my wife and I own a real estate and property management company. The uh, name of the company is Triple E Realty. Uh, that's the real estate company and triple E property management. That's the property management company. So we've been doing that uh, for about 18 years now. So I wow. uh, started off as investors after football ended for me, uh, started purchasing investment opportunities and then went to corporate America, of course, did that for several years while we built our business. And uh, once the stars align, uh, she and I both uh, walked away from corporate America and said, this is what we're going to do full time and have a look back. Yeah, when you talk about that and what uh, what that all is about, what to, you know that skill set of being good at that because you did do the corporate thing for a number of years, had opportunities. Uh, what is what is what have you drawn upon that made the two of you good at what you do? Uh, well, I was a quality engineer at Rolls Royce. I was yeah. a quality executive at Rolls Royce for a few years, and it's all about processes and yeah, uh, and that really helps us uh, in the industry that I'm in, uh, well, was in, and now bringing that uh, bringing that to the fold uh, and being able to pull another boiler maker with me, Jamel Coleman actually um, that yeah. used to play with us. He actually works with us as our uh, one of our managers, and he kind of he kind of did quality engineering as well. Uh, so we have those processes to be able to put in place and making sure that we're eliminating uh, wasted time and things like that for our staff. So that really leans on us. Then my wife has an accounting degree, so she. Yeah does the books and make sure that you know um although i have to make sure she doesn't spend all the money she makes <laughs> sure the money is going in the right places and the books budget out at the end of the month yeah jamel coleman defensive back at number 14 as i recall is that yes, right? right i don't know if absolutely I'm, if i'm remembering right uh, uh played got a lot of playing time in in his days as a boilermaker and you guys were teammates you know, process is an interesting thing, and and you you had two different experiences as coaches. You had you had Joe Tiller, you had you had Jim Coletta. Yes, you 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 had a huge part of making Joe Tiller's first year an, an unbelievable success. But what did you learn from both those guys? Because both of them were process oriented, I'm sure, as coaches and had had plans and how they went about things. Uh, what you what were your takeaways from maybe from the Coletto experience and from and then from the Tiller experience? On the Colorado experience, obviously, we didn't have a lot of success on the field, um, but we did have a lot of individual success as far as building players, right? Um, yeah. As far as uh, we just couldn't never quite gel it together on, on Saturday like we should, um, and the ability to be able to finish games, right? That was probably our Achilles heel, our inability to finish, um, and pretty much uh, the mindset shift, the mindset shift uh, from Coach Tiller to from Coach Coletto to Coach Tiller was the expectation of winning, right? So yeah. uh, we expected to win, and Coach did, he kind of put that expectation on us that we expected to win, and and we practiced for that. We practiced for everything. Everything was structured, right? We had a lot of structure, a lot more structure than we had previously. So when the situation presented itself, you were prepared for it. Right. Yeah. We practice the it's a minute left. You got one time out. 
go, right? We yeah. practiced that. So the Michigan State experience, right? <laughs> It wasn't, it wasn't a big deal. Everybody was calm because we had done it so many times in practice that the process fell in place. So um, big difference, big, big shifts, uh, you know, had small successes with um, Coach Coletto. I love him to this day. He gave me my opportunity to get on the field. Uh, funny story, when you ask about birthdays, I tell my wife this, and so I, I make them seem like I'm just this prodigy where I scored my first touchdown at 17 years old, right? Yeah. So, uh, against um, Ball State, and my birthday was the following weekend. So that's right. So I scored my first touchdown. So I said, "Oh, I was in college at 17 years old. I'm a prodigy." You know, we <laughs> <laughs> just love hearing that story all the time. That's right. You were a youngster coming in out of Detroit. Uh, I, I we ask you a little Pontiac, what Pontiac. I'm sorry. Oh gosh, don't don't make that mistake. That's that's terrible. I, out of Pontiac which is north of Detroit. And of course, uh, uh, and, and tell me a little bit about a, and I asked a little bit about birthday traditions growing up, but also just how you got to Purdue, who recruited you? Uh, what was that? Uh, what was that tie? You know, Purdue had, had players from the, you know, from the Oakland County and, and Wayne County areas over the years, but uh, tell me how that came about. Well, I, well, I was all set. I was all set almost to go to Michigan, right? So Michigan yeah. had offered, um, that it was an offer on the table. Um, then uh, Bobby Turner came into my living room. Uh, he yeah. came into my living room and me and, my, me and, my, me and Adrian Beasley, we joke about it all the time. He had yeah. me in point stands and he was just slapping my legs, right? Saying, man, you're strong. You can play for me right now. And just I, everything about him, <clears throat> everything about him just just made me want to be a, a Boilermaker, right? So. Yeah everything and so if it wasn't for him I, I would be a Wolverine I would have been I know I would have been but um Bobby Turner he, he, everything about him I just wanted to play for him I really did I really wanted to play for him and I got the opportunity to do it for a couple of years before he moved on to the Broncos so uh, that's how I got to Purdue 100 percent he 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 convinced me that Purdue was the place for me and he was the coach for us for to get me where I needed to go yes and and a prolific career at Purdue. I know that Edwin doesn't know, doesn't rec recite these, but I will. He's seventh in career all, all time yards, eighth in rushing of tenth. And, and as a youngster, he might have been 19 in the, at this date, 227 yards against the NC State Wolfpack. And they and I remember that game. That the seas were parting. You guys were were running wild. What all great running backs have memories of their best days. And this is one of the top days, what top five or six top, yeah individual game performance in Purdue football history. What do you remember about that game and just uh, and just having that big, uh, big afternoon against the Wolfpack? I, I remember the line being dominant, right? Yeah. The line, I mean, we dominated the line of scrimmage. Uh, it seems like every carry was 10 or more yards. And um, just, you know, the line had their way that day. They, they, yeah. they, they as they say, they ate their weeds that morning. Yeah. And we came out and we dominated the line of scrimmage. Uh, we didn't know. Uh, coach, coach going in had a, a feeling that we would uh, have some success running the ball, and once we started early um, doing it, he, he just he rolled it all the way through, and I was happy happy to be a part of it. You know, one of my favorite memories, and and talk about that turnaround season where Joe Tiller said every week was Christmas, and and in some ways in 1997 that is true. After the Toledo loss, you know, you beat Notre Dame and go through what you went through. One of my favorite plays, I think it was one of the first or second plays from scrimmage in, in, in the 97 game against Wisconsin, a very formidable opponent. And uh, you take off, uh, I think it was 75 yards on that one. Uh, do you still see that one in your dreams at, at all? I do, but the only bad thing is um, – I see Brian Alford just running next to me. I'm at a full sprint. And he's just jogging right next to me. Like, <laughs> what are you doing? Man? So, but yeah, another another situation where uh, the, everything everything lined up that we caught him in a blitz. Uh, it looks like one of the linebackers probably hit the wrong gap. I, I I was able to scoot through there, and the field was open. At that point, no one was catching it. So yeah. Yeah, you had your advantage on Ron Dane at that point in time. So that was a, that, that was a good thing you tell your grandkids. So tell me a little bit of what you care to share about your family and what's going on in the life of the Watsons uh, these days outside of a, a, a special birthday uh, for you. I got two boys, um, two boys, 13 and 11. Um, both are playing football, baseball, track. 
you name it. And dad gets out there and coaches every <laughs> chance he gets, right? Good. Uh, I, I stay away from baseball. Well, I coach him after the coach coaches me how to coach him in yeah. baseball. So uh, I sit back. I, I get to be a dad uh, during the baseball season. But football season, I'm, I'm locked in. So uh, I coach both of them. Uh, my oldest is headed to high school, high school next year, believe it or not. Wow. Yeah. High school. So it'll be interesting how I how I uh, convince whatever school he goes to to say, hey, I got a guy that wants to volunteer. So yeah. uh, my wife, uh, my beautiful wife, Ivana, um, uh, like I said, we've been married for 20 years now. Good so for you. Celebrate, uh, celebrate our 20 year anniversary this year. And, and you know, we get the, the blessing to be able to work together every single day. Uh, that doesn't work for a lot of folks, but yeah, it works for us. Uh, we have our own offices now, which makes it a lot easier. <laughs> so yeah, that's, that's a, a lot easier. So that's what's going on. I mean, we work a lot, uh, family, um, make sure that we spend time with family. We do a lot of traveling with the kids. We try to do a few trips a year uh, just to, you know, unwind a little bit because, you know, we work a lot, you know, trying to build a, a solid foundation for them uh, and the Watsons from years to come. So that's the goal. Yes, in the Indianapolis area is chock full of Purdue football alums. Uh, 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 number 59, you probably see him from time to time, Roosevelt Coleman and others uh, in that town. All right. uh, one, you know, the Boilermaker Rose Bowl team, the 2001 Rose Bowl team celebrated, a, had, a, had a reunion this past weekend. And you guys, even though it wasn't your, you didn't quite get to pass it, you, know, you certainly had a part in, in planning that expectation in 97. And, and even though Drew Brees was just a reserve quarterback that season, uh, you know, what kind of a satisfaction do you take in terms of building that? And then yes, ultimately those guys got to go to Pasadena. You got to go to, you got to go to San Antonio and win a game. That was a big deal as well, but tell it you know, what's your takeaway from that and that ability to, you know, start something big that ultimately somebody else got to share and ha and have the glory to some extent by getting out to Pasadena. Absolutely, absolutely. I, I we we look back at those that, that first year. So that senior year, a new new staff comes in, and I I, I joke, um, me and Kendall Matthews, we were yes. sitting watching the bowl game um, the year before, a, a, a Wyoming's bowl game, and we looked yeah. at each other and was like, man, they ran the ball like three times. <laughs> So, so we we were kind of you know we were kind of you know a bit skeptical of the new staff coming in, and quickly you saw it was just the coaches. Man. It was really, and as you get older, you see not that we didn't have good coaches, not that we didn't yeah. have good coaches before, but we had great coaches yeah. um, when the new staff came in, and you can just tell the difference. The fact that we were just learning so much, right? We were learning so much that we didn't know who are seniors, and we're like why am I just not learning this, right? So, yeah. and then, then once we started having some success and then to be able to say, man, you know, we struggled for three years and then we had a lot of success that very first year and then it just kept going and it just kept building. And I think our success allowed for better players, as they say, um, yeah. to want to come to Purdue. Um, the the, the four-star guys, as they say yeah. it, you know, uh, or five-star guys. So we can say, we can always say, hey, we were the beginning, um, the spark that got it all started. Um, and, and 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 I love Purdue to this day. I support them forever, grateful for every tree right behind me. Yeah. And um, and I'm proud to, to be a part of that that one year oh, that started, you know, the the rebuilding process. Kendall Matthews, Edwin Watson. Two as good good a tandem running backs as Purdue's had. Unfortunately, Kendall pulled up with that hamstring or whatever against Illinois, but uh, go on his way to a long touchdown, I, as I recall. Yeah. Uh, but again, uh, really changed the face of Purdue football. These guys as seniors on this football team, a lot of credit needs to go to them. We all, you know, not that uh, not that credit doesn't go to others, but uh, these guys had a huge part in making that uh, change. Edwin, I'm going to let you get back. I know you're in a busy day ahead of your work. I hope you get a uh, special birthday. So do, do the kids do anything special? Are you going to do anything special tonight to frequent an establishment of sorts? Or what? what's the family plan today? Well, they'll, they'll have a party. They, they got, looks like they got food out there at work. So uh, ah, they'll, they'll feed me today. But 
Hey, it's, it's football season, so we got practice tonight. So yeah, practice. We got a game tomorrow, so we'll we'll celebrate. We'll probably celebrate this weekend. But for right now, we're locked in and getting ready for for a game. All right. Have a great rest of your day. Thanks so much for taking the time, and uh, uh, we'll remember your 45th birthday and look forward to many, many more. Thank you. Blow it up.